Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Zoom Low 2 18-in-1 Camping Shovel Multi-Tool. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get this open. So this is the ZS2 model. So here's the shovel and this pouch. And here are the instructions. Let's take a look at those. So it says net weight is 1.66 kilograms. Length is 1,010 millimeters. So it's just one centimeter over a meter. So this shows the different lengths of the components. So you can pause and read through those. So we have a shovel, knife with a saw, harpoon, screwdriver, Phillips and regular, fire starter and whistle, mini hammer, compass. And then if we look at the saw blade, we have the chopper, wrench, scale, nail puller, saw, rope cutter. The shovel can be positioned at three different angles so you can have 180 degrees or 90 degrees or you can fold it up against the handle. Okay so here we have a storage bag. You could put this on a belt but you'd probably want this more on a backpack or something. Also comes with a shoulder type strap. Has a hook and loop fastener to close it. So the bag has little compartments for the components so these can slip into here. So let's get these out. So these are made of aluminum. I'm gonna go widescreen here. So this one has the hex. So here's the knife blade and the harpoon. I'll leave those in there for a minute. So the shovel has its own cover. Pull that off. And here we have the shovel blade. There's a little bit of oil in there from storage. I'll wipe that off. So here are all the components. We have the shovel, the knife, the saw, the spear. Here's the compass. This has a paracord loop on it. Phillips and flathead screwdriver. That goes into the end of this one here. It feels like it has a magnet in there to hold it in. So you have a Phillips screwdriver here and it has a nice big handle on it too. So that'll really come in handy. And we have the breaker here. So this would be for breaking like a car window to rescue someone. So this hammer part can unscrew here. And inside of that we have a flint. And then this unscrews out of here where we have a whistle. So that's a very loud high pitched whistle. The threads on this feel very, very smooth. So then these pieces are very similar except this one has the screwdriver hex in it. So these parts of the handle are where you mount the knife and the spear. So it's threaded in here. So there we have the knife. So that knife has a saw on the back side. It also has a bottle opener. And then here's the spear. So you can see that has a very sharp tip on it. So you could use that for spear fishing. And then when this is assembled, these blades are protected as they fit inside the handle. So this will go in here and we'll tighten it down. And this does have a gasket on it to keep the water out. Then the spear will go in next. Okay, and finally put the screwdriver in here. This will go in the end. We'll put the flint and the hammer in the very end. Then we'll cap this off with the compass. So now we have the fully assembled shovel. Let me get a measurement on that. So we got 39 and 3 quarters inches, so that equates to 1.01 meters. So this feels very sturdy. Let me move this around. Okay, so at this end here, we have the shovel and you can see it's loosey-goosey. So we can tighten this here. And now that's stiff. So you can do digging with that, or you can use these edges for chopping. Sawing over here, we have a rope cutter, nail pullers. We have a wrench here. This has a little flat here, so you can push on it with your foot. Let me loosen this up. We can turn this 90 degrees, like so. We'll tighten this up. And now we can hoe with the shovel. You could potentially maybe anchor that in the ground, use it kind of like an anchor. Then of course, we can fold this all the way in for storage. So if we want the knife, we can just unthread this section here carefully. And here we have the knife. Now if you don't want to have the whole shaft, we can unthread this. Now we're gonna have the spear come out here. We wanna make sure we stay clear of it. 
Now we could unthread this end and thread that into our knife. There we have a longer handle there. We can take these two sections apart. We can place the knife inside of the spear, put the screwdriver in the back, put the flint in, and now we could use this for spear fishing. So while these are aluminum handles, it's thick aluminum, it's real sturdy, and there's some heft to this. So if you're using this for spear fishing, you have some weight behind that spear. So you can reconfigure this how you like to use it the most. You can have it so you just have to unscrew the shovel to do your spear fishing, or you could have the knife here. You can move it around to how it best suits you. Now if we unscrew this back piece here, let me separate it so it's easier to see. This is open here. So you could put some paracord, money, or other items in here, and then seal them in with that o-ring and protect them from water. I like the idea of throwing some cord or something in that area. So I wanted to do an overall look on my bench. Now I'm going to test some of these out, and I'll cut to those videos now. Okay, so I want to try shoveling with this. It's starting to snow here. There's a storm coming. I'm going to try and make this quick. This is a pile of some decomposing sod, so I don't know how easy it's going to be to dig. We'll try it. It feels partially frozen too. So that worked pretty good. It sliced right into it. I like that this handle's long. It gives you lots of leverage. So if you look at a lot of compact shovels, they have short handles on them. It's not something I'd really want to dig with. This has no problem digging. It's nice to see a survival shovel that can actually shovel. Well, that concludes the digging test. I'm gonna go clean this off. Okay, let's try the saw. I have a piece of construction wood here in my vise. I'm not gonna saw all the way through. I just wanna see how it cuts. So I'll start with the saw that's on the edge of the shovel. When I was cutting out here, it was resonating and making kind of a squeaky noise. It cut better when it was supported by the vise. Needless to say, you're not going to construct houses with something like this, but if you want to cut a sapling or a small branch, I think this is going to work fine. Let me get the saw on the back of the knife. So that works kind of similar. My problem is when I'm cutting here, it's getting kind of bound up. Now, if you're cutting a branch, it's rounded. So I would probably start cutting it at the bottom and then go to the top and finish the cut. And as you get deeper in, you're gonna have more contact with the blade. But with the branch, typically you can kind of bend it open a little bit and that'll help you do the cut. So we also have the knife here. That feels pretty sharp. Let's try cutting with it. I'm at kind of a weird angle, but And I am holding the whole thing. I'll take this apart so it's a little shorter. I don't want to cut towards my vise. So those are some pretty good shavings. So you could use something like that to help start a fire. So if you're making a tent stake, you could saw into it, and then take a knife and cut down and make a little notch. like so. So if you can imagine here, this end would stake into the ground, 
in your notch would go over some cord like that. I'd show on a branch, unfortunately I don't have any sitting around right now. While we have the knife out, I'll get the flint out. Now you don't really want to dull your blade with this, but we have metal here at the bottom of the blade. We have some on the saw side, so we can do this. You can see those sparks coming off there. So if you had a little pile of wood shavings, you could use that spark to start a fire. Now what I would do is I would practice ahead of time so if you're in an emergency situation, it's not your first time starting a fire. While we're at the vise, let's try driving a screw. So here I have a one and a quarter inch or one inch drywall screw. So that worked very well. I was even at kind of a weird angle there. It'd be easier for me to do it this way. Now a lot of screwdrivers will have rubber grips on them. This does not, but you do have a lot of holding surface here. So if you do have a really tight screw and you really need to get a good grip, you have a huge handle here to hold on to. I would say the big downside of this is that you can't get into really super tight places with it, but if the screw's not in a tight spot, this is a very usable screwdriver. Let me try another one at this angle. Oops. So that was a little bit easier. Now let's try and unscrew these. Okay. Okay. So there's an issue there. This one's tight in there. So it's unscrewing the bit holder here. I'm guessing if I took a regular screwdriver and just kind of loosened it a little bit, this will start working. So I'm pushing in on it as I unscrew it. And we got that out. So this could be a little tricky for loosening really tight screws due to the way this is in there. Certainly for tightening screws, works great. So that was the Zune Lotu 18-in-1 Camping Shovel Multi-Tool. So I demonstrated just a few of the features of this. Certainly has specific uses like using like a shovel and a saw, but the rest of the usage is up to your imagination. Now there's some different cutting surfaces on here, like this is one for cutting rope, and it has a little bit of an edge on it, but I'm guessing most people would want to sharpen that up. And then it has this chopping blade here. That's decent, but you may want to touch that up a little bit. And of course, if you're shoveling with this, that's going to dull this chopping blade. I'm guessing most people using this will use some of the tools more than others. It also has that scale on there. I forgot to mention that, so you can measure things. But I really like the build construction of this. It feels really solid, and it's full of all sorts of hidden features. So a tool like this would be great to throw in your truck, SUV, car, with your emergency survival gear. You could put this in your hiking backpack if you're going somewhere unfamiliar and you just want to be prepared. When you pack up something like this, you're not really supposed to know exactly when or where you'll need it, but when the time comes, you'll be glad you have it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.